Okay, so uh, the lesson's going to start now. So um, today, what we're going to be doing is how to first write your outline, like when you start a story idea. So um, this is also very helpful for if you're ever doing pitches to companies such as Webtoon or Tapas. This is exactly what they ask for. So uh, every method is a bit different. So you don't have to follow this way. But these are the things that companies are going to want from you. Uh, let's say if they said, oh, we want to turn your story into a movie or something like that. And it really helps you. Um, I found that this style that they ask for really helps you when you write in your own stories. So before we start, I'm just going to talk a little tiny bit about Shrine. So uh, doing the lesson today is me, myself, the writing lesson. And I work for a company called Shrine Comics that you can see on the screen here. We're a web comic company uh, that contract, well, not contract authors, but publish only certain uh, artists. So as you can see here, we have only seven series. So it's not like Tapas or Webtoon where everyone can upload. We're a one place destination where you can read these type of stories. Uh, so I'll just... So I'm just going to click on the first one as an example to show you. Um, Zero, which is like a One Piece fantasy type story. My internet's really slow as well. But yeah, there you go. So you can read all the stories on there. And uh, we're trying to give back to the community by helping you guys do lessons uh, since we have a lot of experience making comics and writing as well. So first, let's start. So... Um, I'm just, I just need to turn off. Okay, that's okay. So first, they're going to ask for the name of your series. Now, I'm going to do another lesson uh, later on between what makes a good name for your book series because there is a big difference between web novels. If you're planning to go into web novels, there's a difference between comic books and traditional novels. Uh, you the The quickest thing I would say is Look at what currently is trending. Look at what is doing well in the market you're going to. And typically in web novels and um, manga, short to the point titles do the best. Something that's going to tell your reader what the story is straight away. Now, this doesn't always work out. Obviously, I'll give you an example like uh, Bleach. That tells you nothing about the story whatsoever, but it still works for that story. So, but that's going to be a separate lesson. This is just going to be the things that you should prepare when you're making, when you're starting to make your story. So first thing, try come up with a name. Second, what genre are you going to go into? So for this story, I have picked uh, Apocalyptic and Gaming. After that, you need to go into the target demographic. Now, this is also important because it depends what scenes your stories are going to have. And whether that is needed. So I'll give you an example. If you're doing a fantasy story and you put in a smut scene into the, your book or into your manga, straight away that makes the story R18. Now, if, if that's not needed in the story, then there's no need to put it in because you are limiting your target audience. So you don't want to do that if you don't have to. If it's very important to the story, like um, if anyone's read Berserk, then it's kind of needed to show the anger and uh, as you go through on. Same in Goblin Slayer, if anyone's ever read that as well. But if you don't need it, then I wouldn't put it in. Same with language, like just using constant swear words in your books and stories. I know that's how we probably speak in real life, but that straight away brings up the age range of the book and then you're limiting your target audience. So if it's not needed, then you really need to think about it. But of course, again, if you're writing like romance and it's a very smart, heavy book, uh, very sexual scenes in it, then that's the reason people are buying the book. So you don't want to cut out those scenes. Okay, next. Uh, everyone has asked for this who I've pitched to. So if you don't know, I also write a Webtoon series as well. And when, when they come to me and ask, uh, can we want you to write a series for Webtoon? The first thing they ask is, can we have a log line of your story? Now, I'm just going to change the screen quickly. 
So a log line is like oh, a log line is like a short or the idea of your story. Uh, it's how you what we call it is an elevator pitch. So if you only had 30 seconds to describe to someone what your story is about and sell it to them, then you need a log line. And with a lot of big companies, traditional publishers, um, this is very important because if they get so many applications, the o sometimes the only thing they'll look at is the log line. So they want just an interesting idea. So on the screen, if everyone can see, I've got three examples from uh, different movies, log lines from different movies. So, and I want you guys to try guess what movie it's from, if you know. So the first one, a computer hacker learns from mysterious rebels about the true nature of his reality and his role in the war against its controllers. So if anyone has an idea, what movie do you think the first one is from? Bingo! So, whoops. So, um, Mr. D got it correct. So, this logline is from Matrix, right? So, it gives you an idea of what the story is and whether people are interested in it. So, like I said, a logline is very important. So, let's move on to the second one. Three buddies wake up from a bachelor party in Las Vegas with no memory of their previous night and the bachelor missing. They make their way around the city in order to find their friend before his wedding. Yep, nice and easy, the hangover, right? Exactly, so it gives you the idea. So last one, a uh, little bit harder. Uh, <laughs> I'll read it out still anyway. A human soldier is sent from 2029 to 1984 to stop an almost indestructible cyborg killing machine sent from the same year, which has been programmed to execute a young woman whose unborn son is the key to humanity's future salvation. Great, yeah. Terminator, correct. So Terminator is correct. So I'm just going to write them underneath for you. So yeah, so <laughs> don't worry if you haven't watched them. Um, it's just to give you an example. I, I, I thought I picked some uh, famous things, but maybe I should have done anime. Maybe I'll make some for anime next time or manga and you guys can guess it. Like, um, But it just gives you the idea and the concept of your story. So uh, what you want in this is something unique as well. You can't just say, you know, oh, the main character goes to a magic academy. There's, there's hundreds of stories where the main character goes to the goes to an a magic academy. You want, what does it stand out? What's different about this one? What's different about this magic academy story, right? Um, th does the main character have, you know, I mean, this is pretty generic as well, but like he has no abilities and he's going to a magic academy secretly, but at least it gives you the idea of what the story is going to be and whether a publisher will want to pick it up or not. Because uh, another thing is publishers go through phases. So sometimes they get a lot of fantasy stories and they're looking, they don't want any more fantasy applications. And then they start looking for something else like thriller type stories. So they might come back to your type of thing later. Um, next, so we're going to move on from there. Does everyone understand logline or at least get an idea of what a logline is? And if I'm speaking too fast, let me know as well. No worries. If you got family stuff, you have to go. <laughs> so don't worry about that. Your family's more important. Oh, th by the way, just to let you guys know, this is being recorded. We, we haven't made a YouTube channel yet, but we will um, We will try edit it down and um, upload it for YouTube. And at the end, we'll do a... Uh, Oh, you want to view the document? Yeah, I can. I can give you the document as well. Uh, I'll I'll post it in. I'll, I'll yeah. I'll post it later. So. Okay. So next uh, next bit is um, not too important. 
So uh, what I mean is not for now, because again, a synopsis or a blurb is a whole nother lesson because there's so many different types. And again, it's different depending if you're doing web novels, traditional novels, or if you're doing uh, your type of story. So romance synopsis are completely different from uh, action. Uh, so readers are looking for different things. So this would be a whole lesson together. And also, um, so yeah, if your synopsis stuck, you should stick around for that lesson that we'll do in a few weeks. But um, for now, you don't have to, you wouldn't even have to start with this. I, this is just something that publishers do want from you, but you wouldn't need to start with this. You can actually write this at the end and refine it as many times as you wish. So an, an outline. So just to let you guys know, they do, and I know people don't, don't uh, like this. The publishers do want to know every major point that happens in your story and just the major points. So they do want to know the beginning and the end of your story. And a lot of readers or writers sometimes are a bit weary of this because they're like, oh, what happens if my idea gets stolen? And uh, some companies will make you sign an extra piece of documentation that makes it so they can't steal your idea or um, before you send a submission. Um, some don't, and I wouldn't worry too much because at the end of the day, ideas aren't that unique. Um, unless you think you have a really, really unique idea, but it's about execution. So how well you do that idea, even if someone has the same idea as you, you will probably, you will execute it better than someone else. And you know what everything that goes through your story, but they will want to know what's going to happen in your story from beginning to end. Now, they usually ask you to split this up in arcs. In in this example, I've done very short um, what happens in the arc, the beginning and the end of each arc. Now, you can, I wouldn't go beyond half a page when they ask for these type of submissions. And I would try think of it like a TV show if you're, you're writing this. So you want to, I split it up into seasons. Now, there are two different types of writers. I can't remember what they're called, but one who uh, writes on the go and one who plots out everything. A plotter and a... Yeah, I'll, I'll do a and a at the end of it. So if you have any questions like that, uh, feel free to ask, ask for the end. Panzer, great. Thank you, Demon King. So... Um, these outlines, you can be both, right? These outlines are just a guideline for you. And many times, even though I write a guideline, I go off track and then come back to the point. So it doesn't matter too much, but they do want a general idea to see what your writing is like. So they do want a beginning and an end. And it's actually, it's easier to write to your end because you can work backwards. And whenever you watch TV shows or movies and you think, oh, how did they link all those you know, characters together or those cool scenes is because they know their ending. If you know the ending point, then you can link it however you want. So uh, another thing which is important is companies like Webtoon or Tapas or uh, TV shows, studios, they will also ask for a shortened version. So let's say if you plan to have 10 grand arcs or it's something like One Piece that will go on forever, they will just in case ask for a um they will ask for a shortened free season version of your story so you have to cut out a lot and and give them what you think is most important because at the end of the day they're kind of taking a risk putting you on and not every series is guaranteed for success um, there's a lot of people who have one hit wonders so they will ask for a short version just in case they need to cancel your series and you can end it at some point. So bear that in mind. If you do write a full story, you do need to make a short version if you're pitching it to a studio. So next. Okay. So next, what they will ask for is your main characters, right? 
they want the personality of the characters and this is quite good for you if you're doing your own writing uh you'll hear a lot of people use the term uh your characters are like cardboard cutouts they're very plain and this is because in when you're writing you tend to have one mindset which is your own right you when you're writing speech you're, you're writing your own speech because that's how you speak and people aren't as over exaggerated as they are in books or to make it more enjoyable in movies so it's good to look back on this if you give each one a personality like this person's angry this person's a jealous type and you make those exaggerate those characteristics in your writing it's good to look at uh, when you write these things as well what they'll ask for is does that character have an arc so they will ask does the does the character go through change does he go through character development that does it focus on this character let's example uh, in naruto maybe there's a um maybe there's an arc where it focuses on sakura right or um which may be not be I interesting but th they just want you they just want to know how are the characters going to develop through the story um and th that's why usually it's easier to either someone y you have to be a bit careful with this because people don't like reading about a character they hate so if you are writing a hateful character at the beginning uh, you have to make him grow pretty quick just a little tip so unless it's a traditional book and i've bought it already so um uh, also don't worry too much about characters because you can always add characters and take away characters when you want again this is just for a pitch yeah sure i'm, I'm gonna look back at these questions in a bit yeah exactly exactly yeah Ro robin has a whole arc in one piece that's a good example um and you can see her how she changes right she doesn't like the whole crew and then she she grows to like the crew in fact i think one piece is probably the perfect example for character arcs because every time there's a character arc they join the crew so w one piece is a good example of how are these characters introduced uh dragon ball z is another one uh like if you think about vegeta and things like that um romance stories maybe uh let's give an example uh your uh the person gets a new job and there's a new girl that comes into the into play uh you know there's always a third third party that comes into it eventually triangle love triangle I'm trying to remember the word okay so and last thing they will ask for if you're writing a novel they will ask for at least three chapters so if you're writing for a novel, they will usually say, we want to see the first three chapters. So we see your writing style, see how you write and the pacing of the story. They're, they're really big on pacing of the story. And uh, this is different in, in different things. And if you're writing for Webtoon, they'll ask for a panel by panel version. Uh, if you're writing for a webcomic, same, same thing. So they, they just want to know the pacing of it. But that's why it's best to at least have three chapters of your work, at least. Uh, of course, if you're doing traditional work, you'd have a manuscript of your whole story done first. Um, but yeah, so uh, I so. Yeah, sure. So uh, I can go through questions now. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, well, I'll just finish off this last bit review what we go through and then i'll take any questions that people have so two seconds so this last bit um you can bullet point it what you're going through the chapter each chapter you don't have to write it out uh fully if you're doing a webtoon as such but if you are doing a novel you will have to write it out fully it doesn't have to be perfect but grammar is very important especially traditional publishers if you think about it they get so many applications every day. If your grammar is not on point, they'll just throw it out the window because they they have so many story ideas. They have so many good stories. So they just they tr they try to eliminate as many as they can. So the first thing they look at, if they get imagine they get hundreds of applications a day, 
the first thing they look at is the log line. Is it a good story idea? Okay, yep, we like that story idea. Then, um, then they go on to look at your synopsis. Do they like synopsis? Yep, let's carry on. And then chapters. And then if your grammar's not on point, they'll just throw it out the way. If This is if you're planning to do a novel, by the way. Okay, so we're going to go through an overview of what you need in a pitch. So first thing, name of the story. You always need to include the title of your story. Uh, don't worry about this too much. There's Some companies have even told me my name is so horrible that they, they want to change it for me. So you don't you don't have to worry about that one too much. Much uh, genre is important, uh, demographic is important, and especially with who you're going to. Different publishers like publishing different stuff, so it's important to look at who you're publishing to um, as well. Like uh, Lensin uh, does a lot of BL stories, a lot of romance stories, uh, but like I said, they do go through phases. But yeah, uh, next. Uh, the log line, as I said, very important. Remember, it needs to tell your core idea of your story. What is the conflict of it? And this is the first thing they're going to look at, whether to take on your story or not. Synopsis, you can leave to the end after you've planned out all your story. But the next bit, next bit is just a general outline, very short beginning to end. What are your key points for the story? Then your characters. What are your main characters? What are their personalities? Do they have any character arcs? Then you can go back to writing the synopsis. Okay, so that's most of what you need for a pitch. Uh, if there's any questions in general about web novel writing, traditional web writing, even getting into webtoons, uh, I have had contracts with all three, so I can um, so I can help out with all those. I, I've contracted with Webtoon, I'm contracted with Web Novel, uh, and also doing a traditional work at the moment as well. Um, I'm just gonna scroll back and see the first few questions, and I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave the screen. Oh, and by the way, if you wanna check out my series, this is my comic, My Werewolf System. Um, this guy with the green hair. But yeah, let me, I will look at the questions. Which one do I follow? Discovery, right? Oh, wait, wait, sorry. If you're uploading your webnode to the internet, how do you get an IP for it? You you don't have to, to be honest, if you're writing your... Uh, so no one reads terms and conditions of websites and you have to be quite careful when you're reading terms and conditions because some websites, uh, like, I'll be honest, like most don't do this because it would be like an, uh, what do you call it? An uproar if they did and most websites don't take your ip or copyright if you are just uploading to them so web novel uh, tapas um, webtoon they don't take your ip your copyright if you are just uploading to them when you get to the contract stage they do then ask for certain things and you need to be careful so some do take your ip some just ask for a license so for webtoon they just ask for a license and you need to look at certain terms like how long is this license for? Is it just for digital rights? Is it for physical rights? Is it for things going on later on? Uh, next question. Do you follow discovery writing or outline? Uh, I do a bit of both. So I do an, a general outline and this gives me a destination, but at certain points, I think when you get into your story enough, you know your characters better and sometimes you might just come up with a better idea or your character, you're like, you think, oh, my character wouldn't act like that in this situation. So your character goes off and does what you think your character would do. And that can sometimes change what your story is going to turn into. So you can do both. Outline, I would suggest, is more is, is important especially if you're writing for web novels, because that's how you avoid plot holes. With web novels, you have to upload every day and you can't keep track of what's gonna happen. So an outline is very important. With traditional novels, you have the editing phase. So anything, you can just 
um, right on the go. And then you go back and edit it to make it look all natural or look like, oh, that's how it was meant to be. But you don't have that with web novels. You don't have the editing where you can go back and connect everything. Um, would it be better to write in first person or second person? Second per I, I very rarely are stories ever written in second person. Um, I don't, I usually it's first person or third person. So first person is like I, uh, me, and third person is like they, um, just think of the narrate. So first person is telling the story from the main character's point of view. Usually, uh, there's different ways to do this. You can do it in present or you can do it like a diary writing. A lot of first person stories are written like a diary where they're telling what their life was like. Uh, third person is the more you uh, is more common because you can write different people's mindsets and views. So if you ever want to move away from the main character, it's easier to do if you're writing in third person. Um, but yeah, it, it does depend on the story that you're writing, of course. Uh, but more commonly, third person is used because you can change characters. You can also... If you're doing first person story, usually you don't know what other characters are thinking and you have to just describe from the first person's point of view, like, oh, his hands were shaking or his face suddenly changed. You don't. But if you're writing third person, you can literally write their thoughts. So it's not a problem. Uh, use Grammarly. Gr Gr Grammarly is OK. I mean, uh, so the there's only so much these softwares uh, software can do for you. Software is getting better and better. Uh, I do use Grammarly Premium. I also use Screen River, um, but it still it still does mess up. So you do want a proofreader. You do want to read the work through the work yourself. Um, it's expensive. Uh, it's eighty dollars for like a year. So it's if you write a lot, it's worth it to be honest. Um, and you can always share, I guess. How to identify your target demographic. Uh, this is a little bit difficult, but rather than... Ooh, so it's hard to say because even with my story, it would be classified as a teen story, right? But the people who mostly read it are my age, uh, around... Well, are around 20 to 30. So... It's really hard to say, but the with novels or more traditional novels, it's more dependent on what is the content in your story. Is your content, um, you, you know, like a children's book is going to be about animals and things like that. Uh, there's not going to be any swear words. There's not going to be any aggressive fighting. Maybe one person will get punched. But, you know, uh, more shonen type stories would be classified as teen uh, more saning, like berserk and stuff like that, would be classified as adult. Um, if the romance is only going to have a kiss, that would be classified as teen. If you're going to describe detailed sex scenes, then that's going to bring you up to the R18 stage, right? So, it, and it depends what your main focus of the story is. Uh, I like your voice. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> uh, are concrete descriptions important for webtoons and web novels? Concrete descriptions. Uh, for web... So, for webtoons, uh, no, because you've, you you draw the character, so the visualization is already there. For web novels, uh, not as much. So, in traditional novels, they use a lot of um, fancy writing, and we're going to... We're going to cover this as well. Uh, they call it like brown writing, uh, red writing or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, but we'll cover this. But there's uh, an example is Twilight. Twilight is very, if anyone's ever read the book, it's very descriptive. And a lot of metaphors and similes that, to be honest, aren't needed. Uh, but some people like reading that. But web novels usually that you can get to the point quicker. So you don't need as much fluffy words or um, metaphors. But you do need to still visualize the scene. Like you still need to describe the place. You still need to describe emotions. Describing emotions is important. It's how people relate to a story. Uh, emotions they've been through. 
what if you are a panther? How are we going to make outline for that? If you don't know our own stories, we just go with the flow. This is why I said you should at least know the beginning and end. Don't worry if you're a panther, but you should at least know the beginning and the end. You can you can fill in the in between bits as you go, but you should at least know the end of your story. Otherwise, there really is no direction for your story. What is the goal? What is the problem if there's no no end to your story? Um, but you don't have to write an outline. So, uh, but at least I would say you're beginning and end. And all studios do ask for this, whether you want to or not. They they just don't want to take it on if they don't know how your story is going to start and end. Why would they choose you? They're, they're completely gambling on your work then. Uh, what if you're not married to the pitch idea of ending to a company? What if you're not married? Uh, they, would, they, they, they would be happy with it. So um, with this, I've worked with different editors. And I'll be honest with you, this completely depends on your editor that you get. Um if you get a, you can get editors that will want to change your story so much. And this happens in the manga industry. It happens in the webtoon. It happens everywhere. And you can't really, it, it's, it's a bit like getting a good teacher or not, right? And, and in a way, when you work, your editor's kind of like your boss. So you do kind of have to listen to them, which is a bit of a problem. And they, sometimes they will tell you they don't like your ending. And you might love your ending and you have to work together to um, you have to work together to create something that you both like. Otherwise, your editor won't pass it. And yeah, but there's some editors which the, the editors I like are the type that they just um, they just improve your story. So if you have the ending or you have something they say oh, why don't you add this to add emotion? Why don't you add this scene? Oh, it'd be good if we learn a bit about this person's backstory. They're not really changing what happens in the story, but they're, they're making a deeper connection or making it flow better. But some editors will literally say, oh, I want you to change this. I don't like this. Oh, I don't like that character. Have a different character. Oh, wouldn't it be better if this person was a female instead of male? And, and then you got to be careful with that because at some point, if you just keep saying yes to your editor, it no longer becomes your story and it becomes their story. And you have to remember you're the writer, you're in your position for a reason and the editor is only an editor for their reason. Uh, how many chapters drawn, written for Comic Mail should you have done before contacting publishers? Uh, three to five. Three to five chapters, usually. Um, you can enter competitions. Uh, so wait, sorry, the question was how many chapters drawn or written for comic manga should you have done before contacting publishers? So I would say three to five is a good good amount. Uh, if you look at websites, applications, they will usually tell you, but that's generally how, how many. I see direction means... Uh, oh, second person point of view, that's good. I've been researching about first person, second person, I kind of forgot third person existed. Okay, good. Stories in a young adult can be anyone from 14 to 30, correct? Like I said, your target isn't necessarily the people who actually buy your book. Um, I think the, you know, young adult buyers aren't mostly young adults. So you don't have to worry about that too much. Yes, have anyone said you can get lost when you're writing a story about your parents? Yeah, don't, and again, don't worry about changing your ending. You don't have to be dead set on your ending. Uh, as long as your editor's happy with it, if you think you've got a good idea, they probably think you have a good idea as well. If they accepted you in the first place, they accepted you for a reason. Would you recommend the use of screen Uh I'll be honest. So I would you recommend the use of screen ever? Um, yes and no. So I can show you quickly. I'll show you. So I can't, I don't know where my, okay. So, uh, so this is what I used to write, 
right uh if this is called a uh, screen river or whatever but essentially it's just a place to keep all your documents in one place it's not really the best for corrections and things like that you can do shortcuts and it's good for formatting so i would say if you're going to do a traditional book it is good for formatting but it's a bit complicated to use as well you you might have to watch some youtube tutorials on how to use it um, but yeah, it just has folders for characters and stuff like that. So rather than you organizing it, everything's in one file in one software. Um, <laughs> can we have a seminar on screen? I'm not the best person. I'm really not. I, 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 I'm, to be honest, luckily I'm in a, uh, well enough position. I write my story. I send it off to a, uh, proofreader, an editor, and then it comes back to me. So the, the uses I would use it, I wouldn't uh, go through it. Uh, would we be having homeworks and stuff? I don't know what that means. I, if I want to publish my writing short story novels, where should I start? Uh, there's not a lot of places for short stories. So unfortunately, short stories aren't that popular. Novels are, um, novels can be around 70,000 words to, uh, 50, like 50,000 to 70,000 words, a traditional novel. So usually that's just one short arc in a story. Um, but the, I mean, so if I be honest with you, if you just publish on like Amazon, which you can do, you can publish completely for free on Amazon once you've written your story. How are they going to find your book? There's so many other people publishing on Amazon who are paying for advertising, who are paying for all this stuff. It's really hard to self-publish if you don't already have a following. The good thing about these web novel sites like Tapas and, and Web Novel and uh, Wattpad to a degree is that they have audiences who are constantly looking for different types of stories. So you want to, what you can do is build up your audience on these places and then, um, and then move to traditional publishing. But um short stories don't tend to do well that well uh you you, you might be better off joining groups or facebook groups or book hub deals and things like that uh is world just usually important web novel or you can assume the readers know certain cliches in case space uh so this question is world building description usually important in web novel or can we assume the readers know certain cliches in case it is based on popular tropes no do not write assuming someone already knows something never write assuming people know something um you will get asked the same question it, no matter what you do someone will miss it or someone will will ask the same question and if someone already knows it then there's no harm in them rereading it um but you should never assume someone already knows something uh if you're putting stuff now world building description wise we're gonna do i won't go into detail with this because world building itself will be a completely different lesson because world building is something that people make so many mistakes on on how to do it right do you know do you do it in the first chapter when do you spread it do you do it through conversation do you do it do you just pop it up randomly throughout the story so this would be a whole lesson on world building but never assume people already know based on something else unless the only exception to this rule is unless it's a gag story or a uh, parody because on those exceptions they have to know what the story is about but we will do a separate lesson on world building also after this you guys should um when, when this lesson is over you should write what subjects you guys are interested in knowing. So if you want to learn uh, like descriptive writing, if you want to learn um, about uh, synopsis, covers, uh, things like that, I'm, I'll be happy to help you. We'll even do a marketing lesson. So how to get your story, which I think a lot of you will be interested in. So how to get your story out there. Um, just to let you guys know my experience, uh, my book has sold 5 million copies so i i think i pretty well in um getting my book out there so i can help you guys uh with that 
screen screen I can't I don't even know how to pronounce it scriff -ners? a bit confusing for beginners like me yes it is uh the only thing I would say is write on a correction document uh Google Doc Google Docs is free so if anyone can't af afford Word at least use Google Docs don't use Notepad because it doesn't have a uh well I don't think or I don't believe it has a, a, a correction the other thing a good thing about google docs with it being online is it automatically saves and backs up you don't want to write your whole story and then it gets deleted or lost on your computer uh, even on word although it saves sometimes it only saves at certain points and what happens if your hard drive dies or breaks it's always good to have a backup and that's why i like writing on google docs um how to make sure your character arc is carried over multiple books in a series while also feeling clear progress in every book so that reader doesn't feel you are baiting them to buy your next book by not resolving the character arcs in a single book. How to make sure your character arc is carried over multiple. So this one is actually different depending. So your main character arc will probably last the longest right the resolution will probably be at the end or maybe there's a change halfway through but usually the side character arcs aren't that long um or they have a second coming character arc so you, you maybe they've changed and then you see how they're fully changed even later on this again is too it would be too much detail to go into character arcs uh, I would like to do a separate lesson on character arcs completely. Uh, what, what, you know, not just carrying them over to other books, but what is needed. Well, not what's needed, but what I would recommend to put in a character arc. Are you in the process of writing? Oh, no, sorry. I'll refuse it. What is the minimum for a novel amount? There is no minimum. So the, the, there literally is no minimum. You'll see different books and different things attempt certain ways you can um you can look up and look at other books to decide what is the regular way the best research is looking at what is currently happening right um and trends do always change and novel formats do always change so you i would like maybe not go in a bookstore but you can just go on amazon if you write traditional novels you can just go on amazon and look at books in your genre that you're writing that are doing well and try emulate it not copy it but it gives you an idea right if that's books doing well and you're doing something similar to it but a different story then your book will probably do well can we have story i so can we have story writing competitions here yes actually so uh in the future i do plan to uh, set up a story writing competition and that short story will be turned into a comic that will be placed on the website. So uh, stay in the server, look out for the announcements. Uh, there'll be a story competition. It'll be a short story, um, like 15 pages. And then if you win, then it will be placed on the Shrine website for... Uh, It'll be placed in the completed series around here at the bottom and you can uh, read it. But th this is quite far in the future because we still are adding series to the website at the moment. Uh, we have six and we need to, uh, we have seven series and we need to add like four more. <laughs> How to write a WSA winner worthy book. Um, so they, um, I mean, you know, that's a hard one to answer. Uh, you'd have to read every story, right? Uh, and again, like I said, things do change with trends and things like that. Uh, uh, let me, I'm just going to see if there's any more questions. We've got about 15 minutes. Uh, I'm writing for Spirity. Can you arrange another lesson for world building and how to start a novel? so that we can do well in the contest. Please do it for one hour at that time so that we can get detail. Yes, I will. So this is just, cause this is the first lesson. Uh, this is just a general outline of, you know, if you have an idea in your head, let's put it out on paper. What do I need, right? And what do you need for pitching? Um, but I will go into 
uh, first chapter. First chapter is so important for web novels, not for traditional novels. Traditional novels, they've already bought the book. They've already invested the money. If you have a slow start, it's fine. Uh, they're probably going to read it, continue reading it because they've already bought the book. For web novels, I think the statistics they say uh, most readers leave within the first 15 seconds. So not even your first chapter has to be good. Your first opening paragraph has to be good. Otherwise, they'll just leave your story. So first chapter is so, so important um, to for a web novel story compared to traditional stories. Uh, Spirity, everyone. Uh, for people who don't know, um, Spirity is a competition that Web Novel do. I was the winner last year. Uh, I got uh, $10,000 and a New York City billboard advert. Uh, this year, uh, it's starting, Spirity should start in about a couple of weeks. And uh, Web Novel are doing another competition. We don't know what the grand prize is. I don't think it'll be less than $10,000. But a movie company is sponsoring the pri the the overall winner. Uh, it doesn't mean your book will be made into a movie. It might just be an advert or something like that. Honestly, no one knows. So if anyone says, "Oh yeah, I heard it's this," nobody knows. All right, not even your editors. Um, how good does your art need to be on Shrine? There's stylized art and there's good art. So I'll give you an example. So I'll give you an example of my series. Like I said, my internet's slow, so. Um, but your, your art needs to be at some decent level because we only are going to do so many series. We only, at most, at the moment, we're doing 10, 10 series on the website and then we will go up to uh, 20. And then I think at most we're going to have 35 series. So five series will update on each day because every day there's a different series that updates. So this is this is my story, the werewolf one. And this is the art. But um but if I go back sorry for anyone who doesn't who's not interested in this. But uh if I go back Punch Drunk is uh, for people who like stories like Baki and things like that. Um, so this is very stylized art, right? It, it doesn't need to be too detailed, but it's very stylized. But it still needs to be good artwork. But yeah. Uh, next. So what I truly wanted to know from the previous character arc question is that your protagonist has already gone through a character arc and has developed well. How do I still have him go through other character arcs so I won't be... Ah, uh, okay. Um, I, I mean, your series doesn't always have to be about character development, right? Um, in fact, the character development can just be one arc in itself. So you don't always have to think like, oh, this character's changing all the way through. Um but it depends what your core story is. Do you have mystery involved, right? Are they trying to solve something? Then then you would move on to that. So it doesn't have to be all about the, the character. Um, but like I said, we will do that. Qualities of a good opening paragraph. It's different. Uh, qualities of a good opening paragraph is different depending on what type of story you're writing. If I'm writing a romance, if I'm writing a action story, if I'm writing a thriller, everything is different. If... Give you an example. If you know your story can only have a slow start and it has to have a slow start, then maybe start midway through your story. A lot of stories do this. Maybe start with a death. If it's a detective story, maybe start from someone dying. Start from that point of view. And then you can introduce the detective character and everything and bringing them onto the scene. My genre is about superpower. How much chapters is minimum for making MC get his superpowers in the novel? There is no minimum amount. There, I can recommend you amount, but it depends how interesting your story is. If, if it's really interesting before he gets his superpowers, then it doesn't matter how long it takes. But it could. Be, but, just in general for web novels, the, the people generally like fast-paced stories. 
So it's best to do that. Do underdog stories don't work on web novel? Underdog stories, as in a weak character. So they do work out. So I'll tell you, underdog stories do work well on web novel, but there are a lot of readers who are against this type of story. So you will get a lot of hate comments. You'll get a lot of people calling your main character a beta male or telling them he's... So th there's there's two different types, right? A, l a lot of people who write web novels grew up watching anime and reading manga. And in Japanese stories, a lot of stories have this weak character that grows stronger. Um, and maybe they're shy, timid personality. Look at... Um, uh, the Hero Academia story. Um, look at Hajime no Ippo, the boxing one. It's all like weak, these weak, timid characters. And Chinese novels tend to not have this. It, it tends to either be they're really being bullied and then they snap or something like that, or they're just outright cruel. So what happens is when people go back to reading the soft, like, underdog type story, they... For some reason, they say they don't like it, but they'll carry on reading. So you don't, you don't have to worry about that too much. You can just ignore those comments. But they do work well. My story is an underdog story. So my story is an underdog story to overpowered story. And I got those exact hate comments, which is why I, I know I know this. Uh, how many chapters one must have before spirit starts like minimum? There is no minimum amount of chapters you have uh, the the one thing I would say is, yeah, there's no minimum amount of chapters you need uh, at all. Uh, I wrote, when Spirit E started last year, I wrote my first chapter when it started, like a week after it started. And I just wrote one chapter every day. So th there's no minimum you need to start. It'd be nice to have a backlog because nobody wants, things come up in real life, um, you have to go hospital, you have to go look after someone. So it's nice to have a backlog. Um, oh, I just skipped all the way up by accident. Okay, I just missed a load of questions. Oh, it's my first time taking the lesson. Do you have a schedule for this? The schedule, so there is a writing lesson schedule. Uh, there is a art lesson as well that happens uh, every two weeks. So what happens is we have one art lesson which will be posted and a time and then the week after we have a writing lesson and then after that it goes back to the art lesson so every two weeks you'll have a writing lesson and every two weeks you'll have a art lesson uh i because i don't want to stay up too late i have for my writing lesson i just picked the time that was best for me um, which has worked for you guys. I see there's a lot of guys in the chat compared to the last week's art lesson. So, yeah. Um, with the chapters question, how much chapters do you want beforehand? There's mixed, there's mixed answers to this, this uh, thing because some people like to see what feedback they get. And say if you've written 100 chapters in advance and you've written the first five chapters and you can see all you're getting is negativity and maybe it's not working out, then you've written those extra 75 chapters for no reason. So th th there's a bit of a both side to writing in advance and writing behind for web novels. Um, but if you're confident in your story, I don't see why, why not write more chapters, right? If you're not going to change your story based on people's uh, comments and views, you might also be just wasting your time. Uh, I'll be honest, if if a book isn't selling well after four months or five months, it probably isn't going to sell well. So you might have written all these extra chapters for no reason. And I like to at least finish my stories. So if my book isn't selling well, then I, I would finish off the story, right? So um, you have to keep that in mind when you're writing in advance as well. But yes, I agree with, uh, sh sh I can't pronounce that, Z Zineon. Uh, 15 is nice to have just to get started. 
uh, it's weekly, I think. It's bi-weekly. So the lessons are bi-weekly. Uh, weekly lessons, but one art lesson, one writing lesson. Uh, thanks for your time. You're the first writer that gives free lessons painstakingly to rookies. No problem. I mean, when I started, I had to ask all this information. I remember I DM'd uh, the top authors, right? And I asked, oh, how did you get to this point? And I, I they, they answered and they were very nice. And uh, I wrote, before, before I wrote properly in web novel, I wrote four novels and I also wrote two web, I wrote three, uh, a manga series for a manga publisher and I also wrote free webtoons and the webtoons did okay they got about 20,000 um, subscribers but I never got offered a contract for webtoon um, so it wasn't until like my sixth or seventh book my sixth book on web novel got up to t top 50 in ranking and then my seventh book went to didn't do well at all and my eighth book, which is my vampire system, uh, went to number one in ranking. And then I got, I started getting offers from Webtoon and uh, other companies like that. So you can fail. I I start. I tried writing both Webtoons and books since I was sixteen, and failed until I was twenty three. But I'm not. You know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I um. I did have a job. I always had a job and was always doing this on the side. And then when writing became big enough, I quit to do writing full time. 2 p.m. UK is way better than 2 a.m. UK. Yeah, I mean, I'm not in UK. I'm currently living in uh, China. So for me, it's uh, 11 p.m. right now. But to be honest, um, it's... Uh, I, I work at night time anyway. And we're going to talk... Uh, another lesson I'd want to do is probably setting up a good writing routine or writing schedule to help you guys. Will we get notes? You won't get notes. There, there will be a YouTube video um, and I can share the document, which I can share my document that I did for my zombie series um, to you guys. And you can have a look at that, like what type of thing you need. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we will get someone to um, upload uh, the video on YouTube. But I don't know how long that will take. Uh, everyone's really busy at the moment, uh, including me. Um, I'm busy as well myself. So, But yeah. So uh, if there are no more questions. Oh, wait. Sorry, two seconds. How long did it take you to be successful? Yeah, so like I said, um, yeah, from... Yeah, from I was only successful from last year or two years. So I've only been successful for the last two years and uh, maybe so trying from 16. So what's that? Four plus three, eight years. So I tried for eight years before um, getting a breakout series. Tried for eight years. It... <laughs> But it's, you learn from your mistakes, right? It's important. You learn from your mistakes. So you also have to have the confidence to... It's like if you ever try to become a songwriter, they tell you to throw away your first 100 songs because whatever you make on 101 is going to be way better than the first 100. So it's a bit the same with writing, right? You can't... You have no guarantee that your first story is going to be great. And the problem is sometimes you get so invested in this first story and you're like, oh, no, no, I got to finish it. I know it's going to be. But yeah, you you know, you at the end of the day, you need to pay the bills. So I'm not going to tell everyone to fully focus on writing, but they were very give you an example. I was a teacher and what I would do is I would wake up at 5 a.m. and I would write a chapter before I went to school. Uh, teach my lessons and then I'd write a chapter when I got back from school so you have to make the time if you really want to do this I, and I'm guessing a lot of you are in school as well so this is a perfect time if you're in school university you have a lot of free time or I did anyway I had five percent attendance 
But yeah, if you're in school and university, you have a lot of free time where you can write. And the other thing is don't be shy of putting your work out there. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, writers who just write on their computer and they never release the story. And no one will ever see it or you'll never get anywhere if you, ne- you never put your story out there. So just put your story out there, see what it's like. See, get some feedback and don't get feedback from your friends. Your friends and family will always tell you it's a it's a great story. So it's it's good to put it in the public opinion and see what people think of it. So don't just go showing your friends and uh, family. <laughs> a bit like a business idea, right? Your, your mom's never going to say she hates your work. Yeah, critiques. Oh, but but be careful as well. So I, I'll be careful with this because you should look at who you're getting advice from, right? If you're asking someone, oh, what do you think of my story? And they say, oh, I, you should write it like this. You should do it like this. Well, who is that person, right? Are they in the same position as you? If they're not a published author, if they're not writing, if they're low ranking then why would you take their feedback? Because they haven't had the proof of having done it. They haven't proved that they have gotten to the successful point. So you have to be careful. Don't just listen to every single person you want. So be careful who you get advice from. Don't you like, there's so many people who said, um my story is trash right and even if you do a quick google of my story there's loads of people who say it's trash yeah it's doing really well so you need to um you need to be careful who you listen to basically with that one if you are self-publishing or starting how, how do you find a reliable editor it depends what type of editor you're talking about um if you are talking about editors who actually edit your story uh as in there's we can talk we can probably do a lesson on editors because it's quite important you have um for stories you have three types of editors you have like a development editor you have a line editor and you just have a general editor if we're talking about editors in manga and webtoon they are development editors mainly so they they do the flow of the story and usually with those companies like shonen jump and webtoon they will assign you an editor so you have no choice you you i mean you can complain about your editor and ask for a new one but they will usually assign you an editor you don't find one if you're self-publishing for a book then um you should ask what work have they worked on so you can try i mean it will be an expensive it will be expensive but if you if they're new you should at least say oh what have you worked on let me see right and then you can read through their work and judge for yourself um and nearly every book i know people ignore this but nearly every book has credits to their editor and then with a quick google search you should be able to find that editor so if you go on amazon it will say the book and then uh, editor underneath it if you're doing that way all right guys uh i need to start writing myself so like i said if you have any uh lessons you want to go through so like next week i think we might not next week the next writing lesson i think we might either do first chapter or synopsis because these two things are quite important right um especially with starting your story (laughs) both i'd love to do both but um I'd love to do both, but obviously one story, uh, I need to spend time on going through the key points in these these things. So it would take up a whole lesson. But yeah, so either synopsis or um, first lesson. But yeah, uh, and if you ever want to ask just general questions, if I'm free, I'm usually happy to um, reply to you guys in this. So if you guys can't, just don't leave the chat yet because I just want to take a screenshot of everyone who's in the uh, call at the moment. And then I send it to my boss to say, I send it to my boss to say I've done a good job, so don't leave.
<laughs> All right, so thank you guys. I hope you learn a lot. So like I said, uh, next lesson we'll go through like the import. I think, I think synopsis or first chapter. I'll do a vote, and then you guys can, um, you guys can pick which one you want to do. All right, and uh, don't worry if you miss a lot of the lesson. There will be a YouTube video, and I'll post an announcement when the YouTube channel gets made about this first lesson. All right, everyone. I hope you have a nice day. Bye bye.